Percy was uh, slated to start on the car. Well, there are only four of the uh, new spec uh, V8 cars in the race. Three of them basically are on screen right now. And the other one, Peter Brock, unfortunately, still in the pits. It's a good scrap going on here. Glenn Seaton in the Falcon, dueling with the HRT Commodore Thomas Mazira. And on the subject of Brock, here's John Brady. Yes, thanks very much, Gary. Uh, Peter, a far from perfect start. You just let the clutch out and crunch. Yeah, uh, uh, I guess it's back the tail shaft. Uh, it's a brand new tail shaft put in this morning, which is uh, purely precautionary. And I could say uh, 12 years racing Commodores have never broken one, so uh, it's rather interesting situation. I'm just thankful that the drivers uh, coming up behind me there gave, gave me enough berth because boy oh boy I was looking at that mirror for a while I'll tell you. Well Peter I hope it gets better for the rest of the day for you. At least you'll try and get it back out there. Yeah we'll get it back out there. Uh, took a bit of time to get the convince the officials to push me to pit lane but we're there. Thanks Peter. Thanks John and uh, to uh, Peter Brock. Colin Bond in the pits. So is the second B&H car, the 20 car. Denny Holm car, the sharing with Paul Morris. We've been watching this fascinating scrap. It involves Larry Perkins, who's running in fifth, of course. It's an unscheduled stop from car 20 for this battle. Win Percy on the move. Car 16, overtaken car 15 with Thomas Bazira at the wheel. And the new 93 specification Falcon locked in between them. And just ahead of this bunch, Larry Perkins. So the V8 settling down into some sort of a race pace at the moment. And the turbocharged cars for outright speed, certainly with a big advantage up here today. Over the top of Castrol, magnificent shot there as they come down through the dipper. And that's the order we're following the 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th. And I think on the back of the V8 Brigade is the second works Nissan. Well, Prompton and Anders Olsen running yep. at a more conservative pace than number one, obviously. That car moving up all the time, they're up to ninth position there. So, as they come down the straight, we go to the pits. And the Colin Bond car in, unscheduled stop, the hood is up. Consulting with Colin, not a lot happening there. This is a disappointment for Colin, this is a brand new car, built specially for Bathurst. Johnny Brady's on the spot. Yes, mate, they've uh, got a bit of trouble here with the engine. They just haven't sussed quite what it is. As you say, brand new car built just for this race. They've had the shell around for a while. It's only three months old and not good sign already. They're starting to go into the spark plugs there. I don't know if they've uh, got a head gasket problem. These cars used to have trouble. They've got oil pressure problem at the moment and uh, the surging pressure for them, which is not a good sign in one of these at all. We're just trying to get inside the head there and see if they've got leakage in there, I would imagine. Uh, for Colin Bond, brand new car and not a good start. Thank you John. Denny Holm has rejoined the race in 40th place in the Vincent and Hedges BMW. And Wynn Percy has uh, taken Larry Perkins and moved up a spot. Yes, so it's now Wynn Percy who has moved to 5th of the race. Perkins is 6th. Glenn Seaton is 7th. Thomas Mazira is 8th. This is good early race form from the 16 car. It was a brand new shell built after the unfortunate accident at Sandown to qualify. They've had a lot of trouble getting the suspension set up right on the car during the week, but uh, I was talking to John Harvey just last night, and he said uh, both Wynn and Alan are happy with the race setup. So the race setup's all you've got to worry about here. Oh, Larry locking one up on the way in. Maybe, uh, yes, he was able to protect that spot. Seaton looked for an inside as Larry locked the tyre up. Ahead to Tui's turn at the top of the mountain. I guess you're going to find that fine balance between wanting to race and wanting to survive and be around at about 4.17 this afternoon. Perkins will have no problem with that. The second uh, Winfield Nissan GTR with uh, Anders Olofsson, Neil Crompton. It's sitting in behind the second HRT Commodore here of uh, Thomas Mazera. It's a pretty conservative pace to run at and a very smart pace, I'd say. This, if I know, this is a very long race. This first hour of drama gets out of the way pretty quickly come down to the nitty-gritty of what Bath is all about, putting in consistent laps without a problem. And you're at the sharp end of the field at the right time of the day. As they come down Conrad once again, Larry Perkins, now the VL Commodore, followed by Glenn Seaton. Very impressive performance from the new Falcon, hardly developed. I believe running about 100 kilograms over the minimum weight for this class, which shows how much work they've got to do on the car. And after early problems, the car's been running like a top most of the week. They have had niggling problems, and I guess everyone's thinking that's what's going to tip this car over. The problems are just ahead. Uh, Mark Gibson, the GIO Nissan GTR, was slowing coming out of that corner. Maybe it was a, a lap car that slowed him up. Wynn Percy's got by him. 
<laughs> and driving like a demon, isn't he? He certainly is. Interesting to see Gibbs has got the uh, windscreen wiper going as well. Here they come along uh, pit straight. There's Mark Gibbs. The wipers going. Percy up one spot and disappearing after the leaders. Percy trying to chase uh, Klaus Needswitz, who's in third place, and he's just over six seconds behind Needswitz at the moment. Well, they say when Percy has lost his communications to the pits, I hardly think they'd be trying to tell him to slow down anyway, would they? Might well, not be a bad thing if it makes him go this quickly. Thomas Mazira pulling out for the inside run. And some uh, chat going on with the, um, the uh, Caltex car that's been pushed into the garage. John Brady being briefed on the problems there. So the Caltex CXT Sierra is not going to be a key player in today's great race with Colin Bond. Great disappointment for the Caltex driver. Meanwhile, Mark Gibbs is slowly falling back into the clutches of the V8 Brigade. This high-speed four-car train of Commodores. It's and the lone Falcon. And well, the traffic jam going behind him there. And they're taking um, Anders Olofsson up as well as Perkins with the sniff of a turbo in front of him. Now I'm fascinated what Gibbs is running his uh, windscreen wiper here. There's certainly no rain at the bottom of the circuit, but we may be getting a few spots of rain off the top. Larry, Larry might be just too busy to take off. Moving right over here, he has had a problem. I suspect there could be a possibility he's got some sort of water leaking from under the bonnet. It's coming up on the screen. I can't imagine why he'd have his wiper going on no one else's. But the other four cars have filed through now, including the Crompton Anders Olison car. Anders in the car, starting the car today. So the Gibbs GIO GTR seemingly in trouble. Keep an eye on that. He's back right off the come on the Conrad straight. Well, there's Larry warming up. Shadow sparring this morning. He's off and running down the outside. Under our camera on Conrad straight. The Nissan gradually moving up to the field. So, we'll have to keep an eye on Gibbs Onslow, who would appear to have some sort of problem there. The car's slowing quite dramatically on that lap. We'll see whether Mark Gibbs takes it into the pits this time. Or is going to hang out there, I'd say he's staying. No, he's out there with the wipe again. So he's just dropped back a little. Johnny Brady will check that out with uh, Bob Forbes and the team down there. He goes across to the inside, yep. and he's trying to give them a signal about... So well, they are. Oh, yes. And that gives an indication. I think he might have popped a windscreen full of oil, because as he went past the pitcher, they threw a bucket of water and detergent over the screen to try and wash it off. So someone's probably blown an engine when, when Gibbs has been right behind him, and that is just impossible to see through when it starts to smear all over the screen. So Gibbs apparently slowing only through a lack of vision. So the GIO car steps back to the blunt end of the top ten. Co-sponsored by Windscreens O'Brien. So he's given uh, his, his sponsor a bit of a plug on the way through. They poured cold water over it from the way past the pits last time. Perkins. So, Thomas Mazira. Glenn Seaton. And ahead of them, of course, is Wynn Percy, who picked them all up and was able to get by. And has now charged off into the distance. So in this opening half an hour of the Tui's 1000 for 1992, the V8's fairly evenly matched. Larry Perkins obviously adopting the right sort of pace for this first hour. Thomas Mazira, Glenn Seaton, and Anders Olison going along for the ride. Larry gets a little bit sideways as he's coming down from the debris. He's working hard as they barrel down the mountain once again. They come out of uh, Master Forest Elbow again. We'll be following this scrap. Let's take our Caltex race score. They've completed 10, Richards and Scaife. Mark at the wheel at the moment in the Winfield Nissan GTR. Leading over Dickie Johnson and John Bauer. Next is Needsvitz and Hansford. They're up to third. Percy and Grice are to fourth. Fifth is Gibbs and Onslow. They're all on the same lap. It just means that the leader's gone across. Sixth spot is Perkins and Harrington, followed by Seaton and Jones in seventh. Eighth is Mazera and Jones. Ninth, Olufsen and Crompton. And rounding out the ten is Wayne Park and David Parsons. That's the order here in the great race at Mount Panorama Bath. The great race, the 30th anniversary edition. Lap 13 of 161. A long way to go. Checking Anders Olufsen making uh, some inroads here in the second of the Winfield Nissan GTRs. 
Larry Perkins has been passed there, and I notice David Parsons coming up very smartly indeed in the um, Peter Jackson Sierra, also making some ground. Now, Wynn Percy is really grinding away. He's got some tremendous race pace, even on the full tank. He's up to fourth position. He's closing on Klaus Needs bits the last point. He was two seconds behind, and he's closing the gap all the time. So he may have a turnaround in the top three with the inclusion of one of the new 93-spec Commodores. Meanwhile, the uh, Nissan boys, there's pretty activity in the Nissan pits with both the GIO crew and Freddie Gibson's crew looking like they're getting ready for a pit stop this early in the race. Well, up front, Mark Scaife continues to lead the great race. I'll let him get through the next little section here down to Mazda Forest Elbow. Left-hander coming up. The exit to there. Now Subaru straight. 15 grand in the hand this morning after yesterday's efforts. And you're looking good, Dick Johnson. Yep. How you doing? Good, son. How's it feel? Great? No, it's pretty good, Mike. We just sort of cruising on about the pace we want to go. I would have liked to have tried to put a bit more pressure on the Nissan, but uh, that's one of them things. Obviously, I actually, I might give John Keefe or John Largering shortly and see if they want to put another 100 kilos on them at the next stop. <laughs> Don't do that to them, for goodness sake. The, the car feels right. You've got to wait to a good start. Yeah, the car feels fine. You know, it's, uh, at this point, it's early days, though, Mike. You know that. It certainly is. I'll let you get back to it. Thanks very much. We'll come back and talk later. Thanks, Bell. Thanks, mate. Nicky Johnson running in second spot comes across the start finishing line and win percy of course has been the uh, charger in the pack and just look at this third and fourth position he's right on the bumper of klaus needs fits in the moffat sierra and he win percy really has been on the charge in these opening laps of the two he's 1000 i thought been... they may have started the race with grice but uh, probably running uh, conservatively they know that Grice can wring its neck if it's needed later in the day, and it's capable of that <laughs> that happening. Wynn's doing a pretty good job. He hasn't had a lot of time in the car this year. He hasn't had any racing, I think, when he, since he went back to uh, to England at the end of last year after the Touring Car Championship. Here and comes the uh, GIO Nissan GTR. Just to fill you in, the officials uh, told the uh, crew a while ago they weren't allowed to uh, keep throwing uh, water all over the, uh, the fence or the wall. Unfortunately, Mark got caught behind a detonating engine with blue oil all over the front of his car. And they're also doing a front tyre change as well. Hydraulic guns hammering away on the wheel nuts. They've been in there for just on 20 seconds. They're trying to do it again. But it is just impossible trying to drive when you're looking through a huge oil slick, which is getting progressively more and more smeared all over the screen. Gibbs goes out, 30 seconds. It was really a stop that he didn't need. GIO car rejoins in 15th position. They've dumped all that time. I noticed they didn't do the mandatory thing of uh, refueling the car or putting four new tyres on it. Uh, I think they may have thought they were going to be a little quicker. Talking about quick, are they going to point Percy at the podium later today? Just look at him on the charge. Comes up behind uh, Klaus Nitzwitz and the uh, Sonovas Vitamins Ford Sierra of the Alan Moffat team. And young Winston coming down to uh, Forest Elbow. Well, there has been some debate over whether Wynn or Alan Grice was going to start the car this morning. I believe the decision was made on the start line. Now, we'll look at the speed difference here, the Ford Sierra. Well, Peter Brock, you'll be pleased to know, all the uh, mobile Commodore fans will be pleased to know, is actually in the race. Just going to hold him up just marginally. Now that Looks like Bob Jones there. Appears to be a bit of water or some film appearing on the screen of the HRT Commodore, whether that's rain. A little yeah. drizzle. So we'll keep an eye on that. There is Peter Brock in last place. Tragedy for the nine-time Bathurst winner boy. It's got tough for him. Back in 1987, he had a winning ratio by that stage of two race starts for one win, which was extraordinary. But since then, times have got tough for Brocky.